Based on Greg Rucka and Leandro Fernandez's Image comic series, the movie adaptation of The Old Guard hit Netflix in summer 2020, and we've got the major differences between the two right here. Fair warning to all you mortals, spoilers ahead for both the comic and movie. The Old Guard follows a heroine named Andromache of Scythia, played by Charlize Theron. This apparently modern woman serves as the leader of a lively team of mercenaries, a group which also includes characters by the names of Booker, Joe, and Nikki. These are actually the modernized versions of their names, because like Andromache, or Andy for short, they're all immortal and impossibly old. The comic features numerous flashbacks to all their fascinating origin stories, and while Andy gets a few flashbacks in the film, her associates largely just tell rather than show their true natures. The comic goes into much more detail about who they are and how they came to be, so audience members who only watch the movie will miss out on dramatic, formative moments, like the story of how Booker fought with Napoleon's army in the 1800s, or how lovers Joe and Nikki met when they were fighting on opposite sides during the Crusades. In the comics, Andy is the classic lone wolf action hero with a dark and violent past, lots of secrets, and a reluctance to let anyone get past her emotional barriers. She also does whatever she can to make herself feel alive, if only for a little while. The first issue opens with Andy walking away from a one-night stand, not even wanting to know the guy's name on her way out the door. Readers also get a flashback to the time she fell in love with a former slave named Achilles, which ended when he got old and pushed her away. In the film version, Andy's romantic life isn't explored at all. All her feelings seem to be totally wrapped up in her devotion to her de facto family of mercenaries. The Andy of the comics is more than just a sardonic gun for hire growing tired of death and rebirth. She resents and distrusts the modern world, believing that people have grown worse over the centuries. She thinks technology provides a means to make cruelty faster and more efficient. The movie version of Andy also thinks that humanity is on a downward trajectory. The world can burn for all I care. <laughs> but she doesn't seem to fear gadgets. Early in the Old Guard comics, Andy fails to properly use a smartphone and resents having to learn the interface on a new iPad. She's old, but it's established right away in the film version of the Old Guard that Andy has no problem using electronic devices. When she realizes she's appeared in the background of a stranger's photo while in a hotel lobby, she offers to take another picture for the stranger herself, deftly and quickly deleting the first pic in order to preserve her secret identity. She's also apparently keenly aware of how phones track people. After she makes a call, she smashes the phone. One of the most memorable and entertaining set pieces in the movie doesn't actually appear in the comic. After convincing Niall, who has just learned of her own immortality, to come with her to meet the others, Andy loads her into a cargo plane carrying a load of drugs. Niall wonders if such a transport is safe, and Andy wryly informs her that such things don't really matter to immortals. Niall isn't convinced, so she straps herself into her seat. Andy casually holds the ceiling of the cabin and takes a swig from a bottle of vodka. As the flight progresses, Niall attempts to take control, restraining Andy and attempting to hijack the plane. Andy calls her bluff and shoots the pilot. We don't need a pilot. We can jump and survive. I am not jumping from a plane! But as it turns out, she only pretended to shoot him. She told him in Russian to pretend to be dead, a command that gets a callback in the movie's climax. A lair is necessary for a good superhero. It's a place to relax, plan, and most importantly, be as far away as possible from enemies, snoops, and the general public. So obviously, the old guard has one. And the differences between the comics and movies headquarters also reflect the differences between the comic and movie versions of Andy's character. The comics old guard meet in a decrepit building full of trash, broken glass, and used needles. Not exactly homey. In the film, Andy, Niall, and company have much nicer digs, reflecting their more familial relationship a well-preserved, abandoned church in a French forest. The only downside? It's near an airport, so flying planes are a little loud. Movies often need a character to serve as an audience surrogate who can ask a lot of questions and get a lot of answers in the form of exposition. Ex-Marine turned ageless immortal warrior Niall doesn't play this role in the comic, but in the movie she does. She's arguably the movie's lead character, serving as a grounded counterpoint to the more experienced characters and their unreal world on behalf of the audience. In the book, Niall's military career isn't given much thought before Andy whisks her away. In the film, viewers see the distrust she generates and how she comes to terms with both her role on the team and her newly discovered immortality. Her backstory is explored in more detail as well. Most notably, Niall becomes the hero of the movie, rescuing everyone. In the comics, Joe and Nikki just bust themselves out of Merrick's lab. In the movie, before she found her current squad of immortals, Andy met another immortal named Gwen. A flashback sequence depicts them fighting alongside one another and developing a profound friendship. Just you and me. Until the end. They're eventually captured and accused of witchcraft. Upon surviving the deadly trial, they're deemed too powerful to be allowed to stay together. 
Andy looks on helplessly as authorities drag Gwen away, confine her to a metal coffin and throw her into the ocean, where she spent the last few centuries drowning, dying, and coming back to life. Andy reveals that she spent a long time looking for Gwen but has never found her. Gwen is the reason Andy protects her teammates so ceaselessly. Gwen's fate ends up serving as an inspiration for the entire old guard, but only in the movie. Surprisingly, she's not a character in the comic at all. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite action movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.